Nanti you get the idea lah. Mm. Yeah. So here we are using this this medium, you know, this theatre shadow play performance to document what happened. Yeah. To document their story and for the kids, yeah, I think it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a release also as well, you know, for them to be able to share their stories with other people. So it was performed. Um, the, the shadow play performance was performed in the village, yeah, the location where the village used to be, yeah, and also performed in different locations as well, yeah. And then this is another village. Yeah, I, I got news that another village was being demolished. Yeah, and at that time, I wanted to explore video as a medium. So I already bought a cheap second-hand video camera. Yeah, and I started using the video camera. Um, to shoot everything that I can, I can shoot lah. When I went to the punk gig, I will shoot a punk gig. So when I got news that uh, another village is being demolished, I brought my video camera. Yeah. So I got all this footage. Yeah. So what do I do with it? Yeah. So I figured, yeah, might as well I like, edit it and share it. Yeah. So this is a clip of the first video that I ever made. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of the things that I do, I learn by doing it. Um, that's how I learn graphic design, that's how I do theatre and then that's how I also now learn how to do filmmaking. Yeah? So I just shoot the video, edit it in my laptop yeah? and this is what I came up with. So um, when I was editing the video, it was New Year's Eve. Yeah? Every New Year's Eve, the Prime Minister will go on TV, yeah? live televised speech. Yeah? You know, uh, wishing Malaysians a happy new year. It's like a 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, I don't know how long. But I recorded the speech. Yeah? And I, I, I decided to include his speech into the video. So, this is the video that I made. It's a short video. I'll show you the video. So, the clip is from all these houses being demolished, but the audio is the speech from the Prime Minister wishing everyone happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> usia negara kita 50 tahun setelah kita mencapai kemerdekaan pada tahun 57 kita betul sekali bersyukur juga kerana sepanjang 50 tahun sejarah kita kita telah melihat pelbagai kemajuan yang telah dinikmati oleh rakyat dari satu tahap ke satu tahap sehinggalah hari ini kita lihat betapa majunya negara kita Alhamdulillah kita juga bersyukur kerana sepanjang 50 tahun mereka lah peristiwa 13 Mei kita juga menikmati kestabilan politik kita juga menikmati keamanan kita juga menikmati keselamatan dalam negara kita 80% daripada rakyat adalah sendiri daripada mereka yang telah lahir lepas tahun 57 tentulah kebanyakan daripada mereka tidak dapat merasai dan memahami segala peristiwa yang telah dilalui oleh negara kita di bawah pimpinan-pimpinan yang mendahului kita tentulah mereka kurang memahami mungkin tentang apakah fakta-fakta yang melibatkan kita ini menjadi satu bangsa yang meningkat maju dan meningkat berjaya daripada setahun ke setahun maka dengan itu ada amat penting bagi tahun 2007 dan setelah perayaan yang hendak kita adakan kita mengutamakan kepada pekerja-pekerja untuk membolehkan rakyat para masyarakat utama generasi sekarang ini untuk memahami sejarah negara kita menjadi negara yang merdeka dan sejarah pembangunan negara yang merdeka yang telah berjalan dalam suasana yang begitu baik kita perlu menghargai jasa-jasa pemimpin-pemimpin kita dulu bermula dengan Perdana Menteri yang pertama yang terlambat mulia Tegu Amran Putra Al-Had Al-Marhum Yang Mabarmat Surat Berada Hussein Al-Ayrham Yang Mabarmat Tun Hussein Aun Al-Ayrham Yang Mabarmat Tun Dr. Mahathir Muhammad Mereka berjaring bau dengan pemimpin-pemimpin uh, masyarakat 
pemimpin-pemimpin dalam barisan nasional yang mewakili parti-parti selain Negeri UMNO telah pun bekerjasama bekerjasama dan sentiasa dalam apa yang mereka lakukan itu mereka mengutamakan apa yang terbaik untuk negara kita apa yang terbaik untuk bangsa Malaysia rakyat Malaysia So that's my first video work, video assignment lah. So I figured it's not so hard lah to make a video. So in 2007, I wanted to make another video. This time a longer documentary lah, kan? A 30 minute documentary about history. I totally remember. I told you earlier I was interested in this, in in relooking at our history, especially the alternative history. Yeah. The parts of histories that uh, left out from our official uh, history, the version that came out in our <laughs> official history books. <laughs> yeah. This is my actual history books from Kong Tri. Uh, uh, so, one thing, one one episode. Yeah, there's so many different stories, lah. Yeah, from our past that are, I think very interesting to be turned into document uh, documentary. Yeah. But I think the one thing that inspired me the most after I discovered it was the story of the Hartal. Yeah? The Hartal is a general strike yeah? that involves everyone, not just the workers not going to work, but fishermen not going out to sea, people in the market don't go out to sell their stuff, yeah? all the shops are closed. It's a total economic boycott, economic shutdown. Yeah? One whole day, Hartal. Yeah? So, Back in 1947, 10 years before Malaya gained independence, there was this huge hartal that took place in Malaya. But no, a lot of people don't know about this, 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 this strike, this huge protest because it, it wasn't, it wasn't in our textbook. Yeah, back when when I was studying, it, it was mentioned in one paragraph. Yeah, but it wasn't given any significance because the hartal was organized by the left wing parties and movement, yeah? It was in opposite with what UMNO was doing. At that time, UMNO was more pro-British. They was negotiating with the British, yeah? Instead of fighting against the British. So I wanted to highlight, I want to tell this story, lah, because a lot of people from my generation, uh, you know, you know, they don't know about this, this, this story. So I came up with a documentary called 10 Years uh, Before Independence. It's a no budget documentary. It's not a low budget, it's a no budget documentary. <laughs> yeah? So just me, I got, I got help with. It's not, it's not hard to make, a, uh, to make a documentary, you just need three people. One guy to push the red button on the camera, one guy to hold the mic yeah, and listen to the audio, and one guy to ask questions. Yeah? And another guy to edit. Lah, yeah? But edit can come later. So it's just me and two friends. We went out around the country tracking down all. Um, these veterans lah, yeah, who were there during the hard time, who were part of it. Yeah? Uh, these, these people are nobodies, they don't have any dato or tansri, yeah? they are just somebody's dato. Yeah? <laughs> at some kampung. Because they lost, yeah? they didn't win. Yeah? I'm no one and they got all the titles, lah, eh? but all these left wing who fought for independence, eh? they are nobodies. Yeah? So I managed to track down 10, but only 5 agreed to be interviewed on camera. Yeah? So I interviewed all 5. And I edited this short half an hour documentary film called 10 Years, uh, very independent, very no budget uh, documentary called 10 Tahun Sebelum Merdeka. This is a short trailer. I mean, Artan ni tutup semua kedai. Oh, this is the buka terus satu hari. Kacang. Oh, this is the intro, the intro for the documentary. Yeah, let's play the intro. Artan ni tutup semua kedai. Tak dibuka terus satu hari. Kacang tutup, kuala lumpur tutup. Abang tak ada mentokah, tak ada teki, tak ada apa lagi. Hotel just means a general strike of everybody. Tak cuma sekali nombor, dia tak ada apa-apa nombor. Matang ni, matang. Matang ni, matang. How many people have seen this documentary? Ya. Ah, okay, go lah. Yeah, this documentary quite underground lah. Yeah, banyak orang tak pernah tengok. Yeah, when I was really, when I released it in 2007 also, a lot of people, you know, don't know about it. Yeah, some people have seen it lah on YouTube and stuff. Um, but the next year I came up with another documentary. Ah, this one more underground lah. I don't think you guys have seen it because I only screened it for a week in KL. Yeah, this this is it's supposed to be a sequel to Ten Years Before Independence because I ended the documentary in 1948. 
when the British declared a state of emergency in Throa Malaya, arrested all the left-wing leaders, banned all the, the political parties and trade union movements and everyone that was fighting for independence, yeah, that forced the movement to go underground and took up arms yeah, against the British, led by the Communist Party who had experience fighting in a guerrilla warfare against the Japanese during the Japanese occupation. So in 1948, the Communists led an armed struggle, armed insurrection to fight against the British for independence. But if you read our official history books until today, they still refer to the communists who took up arms as terrorists. Yeah? They still refer to that period instead of a war, they call it an emergency. Because that's the term that the British had used, the British colonial government had used. Yeah? So I wanted to get the story out there from the perspective of those who took up arms to fight against the British. So, I call the documentary Revolusi in Papalapan because, or the revolution of 1948, because when I met these people who took up arms, a lot of them, uh, they don't, they, they're not in Malay Malaysia. They live at the border, Malaysian Thailand border, yeah, where they, their base camp used to be. They're not allowed to come back. Some came back, yeah, but most of them are still there. Yeah? Because when I talk to them, when I ask them the question, when did you join the struggle? And the term that they, a lot of them will give, the line that they will use, will use is, uh, saya masuk revolusi tahun 42. Mm -hmm. I joined the revolution in 1948. They all use the word revolusi. And I think for Malaysians, revolusi is, is kind of a foreign word. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We don't, pernah baca keluar buku teks apa kata revolusi dalam sejarah Malaysia. Mana ada? Betul tak? Yeah? So when I was talking to all these old people, they're all talking this revolution, this revolution, that, that. So, yeah, so, uh, as a tribute, yeah, I, I named my document because they, for them, in 1914, when they took up arms, it was an armed revolution. But we don't call it a revolution because it's a failed revolution. So, a failed revolution is called an insurrection, lah. Yeah? So, but to them, it was a revolution. So, I'll just show you a short clip um, from the documentary. Oh, banyak kena ke Orang kena tidur eh, Bukan ada Orang tak tidur sedap Pukul 12 malam Dia kejut dengan orang tu Orang lari dah orang Mana seorang lari Bagi orang Indonesia balik ke Indonesia Lagi ke Indonesia Mana yang bukan nak tempat Tak sedap lagi dalam kampung Terus masuk hutan Itu orang Tak tak orang masuk hutan Habis dah masuk jail belakang. Lepas itu, berapa lagi anggota api banyak kentang, Pak? Saya pun undur daripada rumah. Masa itu lah. Gerakan ni dah sejak halal tadi. Terpaksa lah, Woi. Gerakan si campur kekerasan lah, kan? Bukan kita yang melakukan pembolaan takkan pasal jantar lebih luruh. Macam mana nak bantai? Kerti nak kat jatuh. Politik takkan memberi kembali tiga sejalan ramai boleh jual ke mesin jatuh tak ada jalan yang lain lagi dah <laughs> ini dah jalan yang dah eh? jangan tangan bagi ke dia angkat senyata ah, kekerasan lawan kekerasan mesin jatuh lawan dengan mesin jatuh sanggup tokoh darah sanggup mati-mati ya. adakah satu perjuangan untuk kemerdekaan untuk membeli pendinasan itu tujuan masuk revolusi so um, I never release the documentary with 10 tahun semerdeka I put it out on YouTube and different places I people can watch it but this one I never released it uh, because I wasn't happy with the first cut that I made yeah, in 2008 because I wanted to interview Chin Peng yeah, because you cannot make a documentary about the armed struggle, about the revolution yeah, without Chin Peng, which was the Secretary General of the Communist Party, he's the big man lah, yeah? but he refused to be interviewed at that time because he was he had this case against the Malaysian government, he wanted to come back lah, but the Malaysian government won't allow him to come back yeah? asking to prove that he's from Malaysia, he was born in Malaysia so he, he, did, he didn't want to jeopardize his case lah against the government so he refused to be interviewed by anyone yeah? um, but in 2010, finally, he gave the green light. I can interview him. So I went to Bangkok to meet him. Yeah. Uh, I spent four days interviewing him. Yeah. 
But on day one, I realized that he, I just found out that he had Alzheimer's disease and it was getting worse the day I arrived. Yeah. So when I talked to him, a lot of the answers were inaccurate. Yeah, he gave some wrong facts. Yeah. Sometimes he, they were, you know, he spent a, a one minute just staring, yeah, into space. Just I don't know what he was thinking about, yeah. And one time when he gave the answer, he just gave a very short, you know, short answer that was unusable. So the four day the footage that I got was unusable for this format lah, for this documentary format, yeah. Um, so I decided that this Trabulusi Part Pulapan, this documentary is going to be unfinished lah, because my um, the main narrator, yeah, uh, is missing. So yeah, it was never released. But I did screen it, the the first draft of the documentary, at this emergency festival, yeah. And because it's incomplete, yeah, I also did for every every single day during the screening, I will um, do a lecture, a class, yeah, talking a, a lecture on the history of the Malayan Revolution, yeah. So every single day. I will. Um, it was a series of lectures, yeah, <coughs> continuous, yeah. Where I will draw on the space where we did the screening, yeah, and I will add on every single day. So at the end of the uh, one week, yeah, the wall is filled with this history, and then I will I padam it lah, yeah, just like the way the history have kind of padam. Uh, 2009. Again, um, I did another project. Um, it involves history. This time, the history of the radical student movement in the 60s. So a lot of my, a lot of, if you look at the kind of history, I, I'm only, I'm interested in political history, but history of struggles, of people, um, you know, fighting for change, yeah? Either through protest and hartal, yeah? And strike, yeah? Um, and even, yeah, the revolution is the arm struggle, lah, eh? but this one I wanted to highlight the role of students, yeah, and then we have, we, we used to have this very radical tradition, a left-wing tradition that we, in Malaysia right now it's kind of missing, you know, so um, I wanted to remind people of our past, yeah, of our past because the Kerajaan always remind us that, oh, protest is not the way. Street protest is not part of our culture. Demonstration is not part of our culture. Yeah, everything that is against them is not part of our culture. But into them, lah, right? So all this thing that I making is to counter as a counter argument against their argument that this, all these are not part of our culture. So this one and 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 remember I told you there's a law. There used to be a law that prohibits students from being politically active. Yeah. So I made this to remind people that the students, yeah when they established a university in Malaya, they were politically active. Yeah, they were very politically active. Yeah, so I came up with this uh, project called Student Power. Yeah, the aim of the project is to highlight this history. Yeah, how about the radical student movement in Malaya in the 60s, yeah, this period that a lot of people don't know. But instead of making a documentary, uh, I wanted to try a different medium. Yeah, the lecture medium. So, because yeah, my target audience was students, you see students, yeah? So I, 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 I could be kidding, I could be lecture, but maybe not lah, I thought it was mungkin sesuai, tapi uh, to make it more interesting, it's a more visual multimedia lecture lah, yeah? With props, yeah? And stuff. Um, so, and there's, so there's a lot of images, historical images, archive, newspaper clippings, and also video clips, yeah? So I'm going to show you a, a part of my lecture, yeah? Where I used this, I edited this clip, where in 1969, during the third general elections, the university students in Malaya took part in the general elections, but they didn't, they didn't contest as candidates. They put out a manifesto, a student's manifesto, manifesto mahasiswa, and during the election campaign period, they went all around the country to present their manifesto to the public, yeah? where the manifesto is, highlights all the key national issues at that time, and they tell the people that when you vote, Make sure you ask your candidates about these issues and their stand on these issues. Yeah. So that was their strategy. A lot of people don't know about this history. Yeah. So yeah, watch this short clip. Yeah. Of uh, what the students did during the elections in 
different fights. I was there at the little big horn. I heard many men lie and I so many more and dying, but I ain't marching anymore. It's always the young to lead us to the wars, always the young to fall. Now look how we walk with a saber and the gun. From the Mexican land Fought in the bloody Civil War Yes, I even killed my brothers And so many others But I ain't a marcher anymore For I marched to the battles Of the German trench In a war Yeah, from photos you can see that like, Thousands of people You know Went to the rallies that the students organized during the election campaign period some more. Yeah? But not, a lot of people don't know about this history because what happened in 69? People ask me. Yeah? The election was held in May 10. Yeah? So this was leading up to the elections. So what the students did, yeah, it, was, it was big news, it was big, a big story, but the uh, government happened and then yeah, all other stories were mati padam. Lah, yeah? so, I had, so, I, so I made this lecture. Yeah? It's a, it's, it's based on my research, one, two years research on the history. I talked to I think, a dozen of ex activists, yeah? So I wanted to give the lecture inside the campus. Back in the 60s, there was only one university, University Malaya. So I wanted to, and, you know, give the lecture inside University Malaya to the current students to talk about the history of their university, what happened, what took place in the university in the 60s. I thought